Hello boys and girls. In this video we're going to implement a short little algorithm that given some real number uh, on a computer that will be some floating point number or maybe some rational number. Um, the algorithm gives you a sequence of approximations to that number and they are good approximations in the sense that we control the size uh, of the denominator for example we're go uh, going to control the size that, that it needs to store our approximation and um, this ties um, on the one hand to the video on undecidability that, that i did this week in the sense that i'm going to use this small uh, virtual machine wrapper class in python that's basically a wrapper for a while loop um, and the point is just that you know if you would go uh, on stack exchange and search for the algorithms how to rationally approximate uh, some number with some boundary conditions with some side conditions then you will find an algorithm and you will be able to learn it and implement it yourself the point uh, of the video is that um, I developed some tools that I will use also in future videos to highlight some um, theoretical computer science concepts that I eventually use to do, discuss some logic. So this is not just about, um, you know, approximating rational numbers, even though that's also part of it, but also uh, coding it up in a way that that uh, highlights some some concepts. And uh, in particular, I choose this algorithm um, because I want then in a future video use it to re-implement an easier director version of gradient descent that I used in the video on, on uh, deep neural networks. Um, they had a custom implementation for uh, recognizing digits, um, but I will go back to an uh, even like more straightforward one-dimensional gradient descent elaboration also using the, uh, the machine, the, the virtual machine. Um, and so uh, for this video let me shortly describe the the algorithm basically given some number on the number line let's say it's you know pi for example this is one of the examples that we're going to look at um you the algorithm the class of algorithms goes as follows you have some number you choose you know pi you know roughly it's three something you choose some number that's smaller and bigger let's say minus five and plus 15. so you have some interval that's uh, some rational numbers and so you have an interval and you have the number that you want to approximate. It might be a real number, might not be a rational number even, um, somewhere in the middle. The algorithm will work by shrinking down the interval towards that, that number uh, in a way that the boundary uh, points always are rational numbers. So once you're at a certain closeness and a certain precision, then you can say, well, take the left or the right point uh, that will be, of the, you know, the point of the interval that will be a rational number will be an approximation to the number that is captured uh, in the middle. And so how do you shrink um, the, the interval? Well, you have the point here, you choose, you can basically choose any point right in the interval, let's say here, and then you see, well, this new point you chosen is closer to your, the point you want to approximate than yeah, the outer bound, so the, the next bound uh, com comes closer. Then you choose another point here, then comes closer. Then you choose another point, might be have done other side closer. And so the, the, the only like freedom here is how do you choose the point? You know, you might want to choose the middle point. And what we are going to do, and what is the algorithm is to choose the median value um, as a as a point in the middle. So given some rational number, this will be the left uh, boundary of the interval, and some other one, this will be the right. Uh, point in interval compute this expression if you look at it you can easily convince yourself then that this is actually somewhere in the interval if this is the left bound this is the right bound of the interval this is some midpoint like some point in the inside of the interval um, you know another one would be to say a plus as like um, a divided by c plus b divided by d uh, and then divided by two so this will would be the middle point right um, but then uh, the denominator and denominator will grow quickly. Um, with this expression, the nice thing is that 
the denominator is just the linear addition of these numbers so they, this doesn't grow quickly and so we will iteratively compute these medians and jump more and more into the like uh, finer intervals and eventually have a breaking condition and th that's the algorithm right so that's there's nothing uh, scary about that um, if you didn't catch my uh, explanation you will see the implementation in, in as we as we do it as we um, as we actually implement it um, the whole thing is also related to uh, like the the median is in general related to the foray sequence and um, might be interesting for you to look at it but we will not uh, use any fan fancy aspects of that uh, in this video but I want to just you know for completeness point out how uh, the bigger context is there and if you want to understand why uh, the algorithm works particularly well for this choice of midpoint then you might want to look into that um okay so far so good um so in this video i have already prepared some code so we will only code the real bulk of the code so um don't need time here um we import a fraction library so that, that we can use um, actual fractions in python and it doesn't convert uh, you know divisions into floating point numbers and i've already implemented this median function that you just saw before so given two rational numbers uh, a and b don't get confused this a is like the whole rational number with a nominator a numerator and denominator um and as well and you know to compute this this median you have the sum as new um, numerator and num and the this this sum of, of denominators as new denominator and then you return the fraction and that's that okay so that's uh, easy enough um, then we have here we have the class uh, of the last video if you have not seen it it doesn't really matter because it's very simple. The only thing that it, this this uh, this class does is provide a runner. Um, so you initialize this this virtual machine with some update step and some halting condition, and then running it, uh, running the virtual machine amounts to doing the update uh, on some state as long as the halting condition doesn't say that you should stop. So this is really just a, a while loop, and the nice thing of having this as an abstraction is that that you see actually where the while loop is basically this it's outside and all the functions that we are going to write in in these simple examples that we were going to squeeze into this virtual machine are just um uh basically operations where you you can compute in advance you can easily reason about how many computational steps there will be there will be not, like in these examples for example in this algorithm outside of this while loop of the virtual machine there is not the possibility that the, the algorithm might run forever so you know if this thing runs forever if it doesn't halt and this relates to all these computability questions then you know it's in this in this runner uh, while loop and uh, nowhere else um okay so we have to code up the step fun uh, the update update step um which will be this you know uh, making the interval uh, smaller and then we will have to implement the halting condition will be, be just you know a condition on the size of the um, denominator and numerator we don't want them to be too big um, and then once we have that we can write our approximation function which is basically just running the virtual machine and returning its result um, yeah, my, my laptop is running hot, so this is the point from where you have always this little uh, noise in the background, but um, I hope you don't mind. Um, and then we're going to run it like that. So I will, from NumPy, imp import some, some uh, constants, you know, we can print them actually. So print pi and x of 1, and then if we run python and close this to rational then we're going to approximate pi and the uh, euler number okay so 
what do we have to do? Um, so we, we will have to uh, choose uh, what our state actually looks like. So how do we run a virtual machine, right? We, we say vm dot run on the state and this, this run function takes a state, returns a state and this will hold our, our result. And so we, we want to define what our state looks like, which will be a dictionary in this case of some values. So we will need the, the point, um, we will need to store in memory the point that we're approximating, then our boundary conditions, and the algorithm also has a running um, guess, let, let's say, you know, there, there, a, a, a running number that is the current best approximation. Um, and so there will be, uh, if x is the number we want to approximate, so x for example pi, then the dictionary holds x, then it holds the left um, boundary, and that will be, you know, we can, def we can here start with some, some extremes, let's in this case say, uh, we define a constant 2 to the power of 10, let's say, and we have a left boundary to start with, very far of the left, and then on the right, the same thing. And then we have an approximation. Let's start with the, the middle point of the real number line, right? With zero. Um, okay, um, actually, yeah, so I can run this already, uh, but nothing happens because nothing is there with our running function. And the return, papa, the return value will be. The approximation value right a so a stands for approximation right left and x is the, the input value so this is our approximation function um, let me do also the, the halting condition right away um, because it's so simple so firstly I want to read out just to avoid these long names the left and right bounds so this is, will be at each step will the halting condition be checked and then what I will do is I will define a maximum and let's start with uh, what did I choose here like 10,000 and then um, I will also compute here now the um, the median of these boundaries and check then if um, n numerator um, is it should stop if this exceeds the maximum uh, or the same with the denominator so and th this is at each step will be you know we shrink the interval and if we're close enough uh, close enough here in this case means our uh, approximation that the, 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 the space that we need to store nom nominator and denominator is already big enough then we say, you know, we don't want to go beyond that. We don't want to have a, a, a even a larger to store rational number and then we will stop the algorithm. Okay, and so the only thing that's really left, and this is also very simple, um, is the update step. So as here, um, we will unpack, okay? Um, so we have left and right, and we also unpack the, the approximation and the value for comparison. Um, and we will also do this median co uh, computation right away, why not? And now, um, on the one hand, uh, we want to check that, that we want to, to make the interval smaller. So we say that, um, let me see um, if the the value x that we want to approximate is on the left side, like between the the the, the left side and the new potential right side, right? So so if the the point is is on on the, on the left side of this on the left half of this interval, um, then uh, we can actually update the right side, right? Um, otherwise, update the, the left side, right? Um, 
and what we are also uh, going to do is to update our approximation right so eventually we will return the the new uh, the new state which will be another dictionary this will be the updated left and right points and so we want to update the the approximation so so what is a going to be well um, We update the, approx the, the approximation to the, the median in case that the median is closer to x than the previous approximation. So we say if the absolute value of x minus uh, the new value is actually smaller than the absolute value of, of x minus the old approximation, then the new approximation is the, is the, new, is the new approximation. Right? And, and in this case, I also want to print out um, some information so the new value then this new approximation as float and also then the difference let's say n minus x um, so this is the tightening of the interval right I tighten interval um, this is update approximation to new approximation Compute point in interval. Okay, um, and that should be it, really. I think we're good to go. So what happens uh, if everything? Like I will have to debug in a second. But if everything worked out, we will just import these numbers pi and x and x one is you know the Euler number, and then we will try to approximate it. And um, let's start with pi. Um, okay, he doesn't hold, so I have made some some uh, blunder. Um, So this should be the left boundary and so minus sign missing. So yeah, and it works. So what happens? We want to approximate pi. Um, he starts with huge boundaries and first shrinks them um, in each step here. Um, so we can actually also, let's print also when he, when he, um, Let's print when when the shrinking happens, right? So, let's print in any case. Let's say with a dot. So that we see actually every time this function is called, um, even if it's not the the approximation updated. Okay. So he starts out, um, shrinks down the interval. Eventually comes to uh, a median value that is closer than the previous approximation zero. This new um, approximation is the rational number four. So this is a first candidate for pi. Then he goes on shrinking the interval further, eventually gets to three. And then he gets to all these this, you know, known uh, approximations for pi. So here's the famous one, 22 by, by seven, goes uh, closer and closer. And you see the nice thing about the median is that the denominator here at each step doesn't doesn't grow so so quickly. If we would do just a halving point, then we would have to bring them on to the same denominator and they will blow up uh, quite heavily. But in this case, these are all very small um, rational approximations and the, the, the Faraday sequence and these numbers have some convenient properties. Um, and eventually, you know, with our precision, um, he ends with 
355 divided by 113. Um, what we could also do, you know, we can say we, we allow for a bigger um, uh, nominators and uh, numerators and denominators. Let's run it again. Then he gets even to this, like, you know, 10,000 divided by uh, 100,000 divided by 30,000 or something. So these are all approximations of pi. Here we have the differences. Um, so this works nicely. And the same thing for the uh, for E, the other number. So here, no. Good approximations. So you see. 878 divided by 323 is a good approximation to the Euler number. Um, okay, uh, that was pretty much it. Um, I will use this function in the video for the gradient descent because I want to actually implement, you know, I, I want to, to, to simulate an environment that is uh, akin to running a Turing machine maybe. So, th so that we actually control all aspects, even how, uh, like how the numbers are represented and so on and so forth. If we can, of course, also just use floats, then uh, we might want to talk about how floats are represented on a computer. Uh, if you don't do that, then I use just this rational approximation, then I'm always just dealing with pairs of integers if I talk about numbers, right? So this is uh, nice in a way. Um, okay, I hope you liked that, uh, 20 minutes. I think that's okay for, uh, for the weekend and take care.